Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So we meet again. Uh, so this is uh, the continuation under the uh, topic of the power system uh, load. Okay. So uh, previously what we have uh, discussed is about um, uh, where to start of a power system load. Uh, the definition of the what we call the maximum demand, average load, and base load and so on. Okay, and we have also learned about the load duration curve and then uh, load profile and so on. Okay, and so today we will continue on the uh, what we call tariff. Okay, so actually, uh, tariff is actually the cost uh, that uh, actually the power utility provider charges based on our consumption of, uh, of the electricity uh, energy. Okay, so actually tariff as mentioned here is a rate at which electrical energy is supplied to a consumer. Okay, and each company has its own set of tariff. The following items are chargeable. So we have three items that are chargeable. So the first one is the usage charge. So this is based on the, our usage. And um, this is, uh, which is uh, related to the amount of electricity consumed in kilowatt hour. So, meaning that if you use more, so you pay more. And the second one is the uh, fixed charge, okay, which is what we call a capacity charge. And this is depends on the maximum demand, which is uh, in kilowatt, uh, which is declared by the, uh, the building owner, okay? So this is actually a fixed, uh, fixed charge, okay? And the second one is the, the third one is the reactive power charge. And this is actually a surcharge, yeah, the penalty if the building owner um, produce um, what you call a, a very low power factor. Okay, so very low power factor will actually affect on the power quality, uh, the amount of current generated uh, by, the, uh, by the generator itself and so on. So actually, a uh, low power factor has a lot of uh, bad effect in terms of power quality and the power systems and overall in the uh, losses, okay? So charges are usually made on uh, monthly usage. Uh, some supply authorities uh, in Malaysia, we have three uh, suppliers, which is the TNB uh, for the Peninsula of Malaysia. We have a uh, Sarawak energy supply for the state of Sarawak and Sabah uh, electrical supply, okay, in Sabah. So, uh, so the supply authorities encourage consumer to use high voltage by reducing tariff charge for the kilowatt hour consumption, okay. Another incentive in the form of lower kilowatt hour charges during off peak hours. Usually this is um, uh, incentive uh, uh, to use the load uh, within uh, midnight to down. Okay, is given to consumer to encourage them to operate during this hour when the overall electricity consumption is uh, low. So our current TNB tariff was uh, implanted as, uh, on uh, 1st of June 2011. So it is almost, I think, uh, 10 years, okay, 10 years. And provided uh, and provide sixteen group of consumers. So in Malaysia, we have uh, we cover sixteen group of consumers. So it depends on whether it is residential, uh, factories, industrial, commercial, and so on. Okay. So tariff A is for the residential. Tariff B, C one, and C two are normally for commercial tariff uh, for commercial owner, and while tariff D, E one, E two, E three are for industrial sectors. And we have also special tariff for mining. Uh, public lighting and agriculture, okay? And this is actually the tariff um, A, which is uh, mostly for the residential. So as you can see here, for the first 200 kilowatt hour, so the rate is around 21 cent, while uh, above that, okay? So as you can see, the charge is increased and it's further increased if you have uh, more usage, okay? And uh, 
we have a tariff B. So this is for the low voltage commercial tariff. Uh, as you can see here, um, we have two types. Okay, so for example, uh, this one for overall monthly consumption between zero to 200 kilowatt hour per month. So the rate is 39 cents. While if the uh, commercial uh, block use more than 200 kilowatt hour, so normally one kilowatt hour above, so the rate is around 43 cents. Uh, we have also tariff C1, okay. So as you can see for the tariffs uh, C1, okay, so we have two, different types of charges. So the first type is actually the based on the maximum demand per month. So this is actually uh, based on the kilowatt, uh, based on the kilowatt, okay? So this is 25 uh, cent uh, for the, sorry, 25 ringgits, okay? For every one kilowatt. And the second charges is actually based on the consumption, which is 31 cent. Together with the C2, Okay, so we have uh, two different types. Okay, sorry, this one has uh, some incentive. Okay, so we have three types here. So the first one is the maximum demand uh, charges, which is uh, fixed, depend on the how many kilowatt installed. Okay, and um, we have uh, charges for the usage. This one, uh, the usage on during on peak. Okay, during peak hours. So which is thirty one cent. Uh, while we have the third uh, charges, which is this is the use of the energy during the off peak period, which is 19 cents. So this is for the commercial, okay. And uh, you, and then another one is uh, the D uh, E1 and so on. This is more towards on the industrial, which is the factory and so on. Okay, mostly for the commercial and commercial and also for factories building usually they are they have uh, two types the first the uh, two types of charges the first is actually based on the maximum uh, demand that uh, installed in the for the factory and the second one is the charges consumption okay based on the consumption So example two, so in uh, June 2006, um, Madam Kamala consumed around 300 kilowatt hour of electricity. So you need to determine the electricity bill for the month for her house. Okay, so this is the solution, which is a very direct and straightforward solution. Uh, okay, so this is, we consider this is a residential customer. So the charges of, uh, for Madam Kamala will use tariff A. Okay, so for the first, this is the rate for the tariff A. Okay, so uh, for the first 200 kilowatt hour, so we will use this rate. So you multiply, you will get the payment, which is 43.6 cent. Okay, and then the excessive of, uh, of uh, above 200, which is 10, 100, 100 kilowatt hour. So it need to be multiplied with the second rate, uh, which is at 28.9 cents. So this will uh, produce the answer of 28.9. So the total up of the bill of uh, Madam Kamala is around 72 ringgit and 50 cents. This is an example, another example. Okay. So this is the consumption of a factory uh, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, the power is around 2,100 kilowatt with a power factor of 0 0.9. And then um, from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. to next day. So the power is around uh, 1,600 kilowatt with a power factor of 0 0.9. And the factory uh, declared its maximum demand is around 2,500 kilowatt. So calculate the energy consumed during peak and off peak period. And uh, the second one calculate the electricity bill using tariff E2. So the first one calculate the energy. So uh, for the peak hour, so it is uh, from uh, 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. 
So that is time, sorry. Until... Um, oh yes, until 10 p.m. Okay, until 10 p.m. So, uh, <clears throat> from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the total hours is 10 hours. And the power used is actually around 2,100. So you need to multiply with uh, 10 hours. So this is actually the total energy consumed. Okay. And then the next one is actually from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. So this is four hours where the energy power use is actually around 1,600 uh, kilowatt. Okay. Multiply by four hours. So you will have the energy is around 6,400 kilowatt hour. So the total energy use for the peak during the peak hours is around 27,400 kilowatt hour. While for off peak period, okay, so from uh, 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. next morning, so the total is 10 hours, okay, so we consume so 1,600 multiplied 10, so the total energy is around 16,000 uh, kilowatt hour. Okay, so the total energy used daily is uh, summation of the peak hour and the off peak hours. So the total is uh, 43,400 kilowatt hour. Okay, so this is actually the energy usage. And uh, the total charge of, or the total bill of the, uh, uh, the factory, the first one, the first charge is actually the maximum demand, which is fixed, okay? Every month, you need to pay around 60,500. And the second charges is the usage during the peak hours. So 27,400 kilowatt hour multiply with the rate uh, during the peak hours is around 23 cents. So the total is um, 6,411. And the third one is the charges of the energy usage during off-peak hours. So this one, 16,000 multiply with the rate, which is uh, around 14 cents. So we will see this value. So the energy, um, total energy charges, okay. <clears throat> this one, so 6,400 plus 2,300. So you will have this value, 8,000 ringgit, uh, 715.6 uh, cent, uh, multiply with 30 days. So the monthly uh, bills is around, which is very big, 261,468 ringgit. Okay, so this is the total usage. So you need to actually sum up or total up with the maximum demand charges, which is 60,500. So the total bill is around 331,968 ringgit, which is very huge, the amount, the bills, okay? Okay, so next is the power factors. So I think I will not go deep in this because I have already explained to you about um, the power factor during our first chapter. Okay, so the power factor is normally will affect the quality where we it actually will increase the losses. Okay, increase the losses inside the cable. Okay. And it will also draw more currents from the generator, okay? And this will actually affect uh, the, what they call the life, um, the life cycle of the cable. So it will actually reduce the life cycle, okay? So, because when you have a current, a very big current flow inside the cable, which is maybe, uh, is actually out of the, over rating of the cable, so it will make the cable uh, become hot, and this will make the cable to be uh, 
high risk short circuit and so on. Okay, so uh, the power factor effect, okay, can be seen from two aspects. The first is actually from the consumer side. So for the consumer, the power factor, if you have a low power factor, uh, you will uh, see that your wiring will be uh, not very sustained. So your wiring will be become maybe um, the life cycle of your cables will be shortened. Okay, your bills will also be increased because you have a lot of losses inside the cable, even though you use the same load. Okay, and that's all I think for the consumer side. You need to pay bills more and so on. And at the TNB side, okay, so the cables or the transmission line also will be shortened the life cycle because uh, more current is actually draws uh, from the from the generator, okay, through the cable. So it will the cable will become hot and so on. And also the TNB generate generators will actually do, need to work harder to generate more power, okay, to actually supply. Um, power to the load. Okay. So actually, the power factor, uh, the, the the what I call the best power factor is one. Okay. But normally we cannot achieve this because if the power factor is one, meaning that your load is a pure resistive load. But this is not. This is impossible because our load is normally inductive. Okay, because loads, uh, our major loads is actually uh, to more have uh, what called coils, which is uh, for example the motors, um, and then uh, solenoid, lighting, and so on. Okay. So power factor, we consider that power factor that is less than zero point eight five uh, shows an inefficient use of electricity. Okay, so this is uh, another calculation. We know that actually the power factor is actually the angle between uh, the voltage and the current. Uh, but as you can actually learn, you have learned actually, the power factor also can be uh, calculated based on the power triangle. Okay, the power triangle where um, you can have this one. For example, if you have a positive Q, so this is P and this is your angle. Okay, so your cost theta should be just uh, P over okay, X. Okay, so this is how we can calculate your power factor. So as we can see, uh, the load is, our typical loads are inductive in nature. So for example, the transformer, uh, induction motors and so on. Uh, and then the lighting. Okay, but this is HID, high intensity discharge lighting. This is uh, uh, less popular before this. It's very popular, but because we are uh, actually converting into LED, which is used uh, uh, DC voltage and DC current. So this uh, maybe can be eliminated. Okay. But mostly it shows that actually for the lighting, mostly is actually we still have what I call uh, inductive type. So to correct the power factor, to improve the power factor, what we can actually do is to install capacitor because we know that uh, for the inductor, it uses a negative Q, right? But positive Q. So we need to counter this positive Q by installing the capacitor because the capacitor will produce negative Q. Okay. And this one, the corrector, single generator and motor is much more complicated. And this one will relate to what call uh, the power electronics uh, field. Okay, so which is will be uh, you will actually learn on power electronics during your I think uh, first semester, first semester of your third year. Okay, um, the other one is actually to minimize operation or uh, likely loaded motors, avoid operating equipment above its rated voltage. And replace standard motor as they burn out with energy efficient motors. For example, BLDC. Okay. BLDC, brushless DC motor. 
So benefit of improving power factor, as you can see, we'll actually in the customer side, reducing the kilowatt bills, okay, and eliminating the power factor surcharge because uh, for us, okay, if your power factor is below than, is below than um, 0 0.85, so you will have uh, what you call the penalty, okay, a surcharge will be imposed to you. And this is actually um, for the TNB side, which is the producer side. So uh, the benefit is actually it can increase the system capacity and reduce system losses in your electrical system. Uh, and then the benefit number four, increase the voltage level in your electrical system. Okay, so this is what we call the power factor surcharge. So for us, which is uh, below than 130 kilovolt, so if your power factor is below than 0 0.85, so we actually have a surcharge. So the surcharge is depends. So for the, um, if your power factor is uh, below than 0 0.85, Okay, so 1.5% will be surcharge will be based on your current bill will be imposed. But and then if your power factor is below than 0 0.75, so a 3% surcharge will be imposed. So this is actually the calculation. So for example, if you have your power factor 0 0.8 and your current bill is around 2000, so for every difference of uh, from 0 0.85 to 0 0.8, the difference. So it will impose 1.5% from your current bills. So your surcharge is 150. Okay. And this example five shows that when you have a 0 0.75, still you will use the 1.5% surcharge. Okay. But if you if your power factor is less than 0 0.75, which is for example, example six here, which is 0 0.6. Okay, so this is the calculation. Okay, so 1.5 from 0 0.85 to 0 0.75, the difference. And then after that, 0 0.75 minus 0 0.6. Okay, so you will actually use this 3% uh, surplus. So the total of the surplus is around 1,200 ringgit. So it is um, very important to make sure that your power factor is uh, above 0 0.85 okay and i think that's all for um, tariff so we have complete our lesson on the topic three which is the power generation transmission and also power system load so inshallah we will meet again on the, the last topic which is the uh, DC and AC machine. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good night.